Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another battle report. This time it's a game of fantasy battles, my Vampire Covenant versus the Dread Elves. My first battle against the Dread Elves, so I was quite excited about that. Uh, it's a 5,000 point game, so uh, fairly large, and uh, turned out to be a really, really great game. So strap yourself in and please enjoy. Let's start with, with uh, my army here. Uh, I drop first. Uh, we, we went back and forth a little and I, then I dropped, so this is how I dropped, and this is my army. We have out to the right some Spectral Hunters, two Bat Swarms in a unit, 11 Barrow Knights with full command and band of speed, and a Vampire Count, uh, Brotherhood of the Dragon in them. Uh, he's got a Reaper's Harvest and uh, a Talisman of Shielding and a Lucky Charm. So he's got some saves, but not not uh, super great. Also shield, um, so I think it's one up save, one reroll, and a five up, five up ages. So. Um, so pretty nasty. He also has crimson rage, of course. We have forty ghouls with a champion. We have a unit of tw twenty-one zombies with full, uh, full command or uh, standard and musician, and a necromancer. Adept uh, in, with evocation and uh, the uh, hered hereditary uh, medical heirloom. Also, the vamp vampire count here. He's the, he's the general. I should say that. So he has that arise, and he also, he's also an adept with occultism. We have some skeletons, uh, forty-six of them in total, with legion standard, full command, hammer shield, two great bats. Another five Spectral Hunters, a Shrieking Horror, and another Count. This time on a Monstrous Revenant, a Great Monstrous Reven Revenant even. He has a Monster Hunter and a Lance with Cleansing Light. Um, he also has Legend of the Black King on his, on his armor. So he has a 2-up armor with a, sh with a shield and a 4-up Aegis. And he also has the Cursed Medallion, so we can pick a, a target to get Riddles to hit and boom. He is also an adept with occultism, and he picked Rot Within and Arise. The Necromancer has uh, the Ancestral Aid and the uh, Decreasing Resilience and Discipline. Uh, I can't remember the name of it at the moment, but this is a shame. Um, and the General, he has uh, Arise and the uh, Breath of Corruption. Spell. Oh, and I also had a Valkolak out on the right flank. He, he's not visible in this picture. He's out over here on the right. And that's just a flashy, flashy picture of the army. Here's the opposing army. We have uh, some Shadow Riders uh, on each flank. Ten of them each. I think they have a champion as well. Uh, but I could, could be mis misremembering. We have some uh, Thunder Pack herd, a Hydra, two units of eight gargoyles, or harpies rather, um, a Dread Prince on Chariot. He has a Hero's Heart on paired weapons, so it's he's got like seven attacks, eight attacks, a lot of attacks, strength five. Uh, he also had the five up Aegis that bounce back hits if he passes the Aegis save. And uh, something else I can't quite remember. We also have some Mudicators, a big unit of them, with a Legion Legate, uh, Battle Sun Bearer, in them, who has uh, a magic, magic spear that gives it uh, some extra armor penetration, or no, a uh, rerolls to wound or to hit, I think, of once, and also double combat rest from all the wounds that uh, she does. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And two. Uh, uh, Aether Icons, so MR2. Also in the unit is a Warlock Outcast, uh, Master of Cosmology. She has the Hereditary. Um, I don't think she had... Yeah, she had a set of power, but I think that's pretty much the only item she had. Uh, but she picked the Hereditary spell um, as, as well as Perception of Strength, Unit in Divergence, and Ice and Fire. A Lone Gorgon, a big unit of Temple Militia, with a 
uh, temple legate in them, uh, who's an adept in alchemy, so a warsmith, I think they're called. So she also <clears throat> boosts the units against against higher armor targets. An altar stationary, uh, giving a bubble of fear, uh, and yeah, that's about it. Uh, the scenario was uh, Spoils of War, so we have three tokens that we can pick up, and we had Dawn Assault deployment. No one put anything in reserves for that, so this is the table. We have a nice big river here, um, and a lake, two hills, forest, forest, impasse, impasse, and a bridge over the, the uh, river that you can actually walk on, as per our rules. So uh, that's what the game looks like. Uh, we had... Uh, Vanguard moves as well. Uh, yeah, they they have been made here, of course. So these guys moved up. I moved up my Markluck, and he moved up these guys a little bit. My first turn, I uh, pushed a little bit forward up onto the hill. Uh, forward a little bit here. These moved out to the flank. I pushed heavily on on the my right flank over here with the monstrous revenant moving up. He's not afraid of these guys, and he's out of. Uh, arc from the militias, uh, and these moved up pretty pretty aggressively as well. Uh, magic, I got a big magic phase, a bit wasteful, but it did cost a rot within on the temple militias, permanently lowering their offensive and defensive skill. I also upped both of mine uh, with this one, and <laughs> I, I actually raised uh, uh, that cost me three three skeletons, but I raised them back immediately afterward. They lost die. His turn, he charges my Spectral Hunters with the Shadow Riders. Didn't see that coming, I should have really. Um, and then he shuffled around a bit. Uh, I moved my Varklock up into the force, you can see here, in my turn. So he actually moved uh, the Temple Militias, twisted them, or reformed them to, to face more in that direction. Um, and other than that, just shuffled around a bit, moved a bit forward. Um, the harp, the gar harpies are moving up to be ready, ready to shaft if they need to. Magic. <laughs> this was a bit tricky for me. He cast uh, crippling fatigue on my spectre hunters, and I figured I I, I quite, quite quite figured that I would be dead dead anyway. So I didn't really. Or it's not crippling fatigue actually. This is the new hereditary spell, uh, curse of the phantom queen. Uh, that's the one. So, um, I didn't really care if I would lose some extra guys from killing his models. At least I get to kill his models then. So, I let that, that run through, and then he had uh, Glory of Gold left and Quicksilver Quixu Lash that warned me Glory of Gold will give him medical attacks here. Then he would just go clean through the unit, and Quicksilver Lash could actually kill my Monstrous Revenant dude, so I didn't want that. Decided to spell that one, and he got Glory of Gold th through. Uh, so there's that. Shooting, he killed off one of the Spectre Hunters on the other flank, with uh, the crossbows on these guys. And in the combat, he killed all but one of my models, I think, or did I... Oh, I don't know. He, ha he has to kill my unit. Yeah, that's right. We t uh, yeah, we, we, we rolled it out, so if, he, I, if I had a spell spell the Glory of Gold, I would have been left with like one or two models and they would have killed one or two models and then I, I would have crumbled. So it didn't really matter, matter in the end, uh, which if I did, didn't spell it, he, he has to enter a unit uh, anyway. Um, so that's the way things look uh, when we move into my turn. And I opted to uh, crumble my skeletons, a little accident, but they, they moved up, as did the ghouls and the zombies up onto the hill. The Shrieking Horror flew over to here, ready to scream at the uh, Shadow Riders. The Varkulak charged into the altar, and this guy moved up in behind, uh, and these guys charged the other Shadow Riders. Uh, Seeing that the, the the other guys fired so well, they thought he would uh, try and up them. Uh, he passed his third check, unfortunately, and felled one more with the standing shoot. Magic. I once again cast Rotwood in on uh, 
the uh, Temple Militia. They are now down to Offensive 2, Defensive 1, so that's pretty nice. Um, and I screamed away 6, all 6, uh, so I had a 6 dice, wounded on 2 up and all of them succeeded, so uh, 6 died and uh, I uh, pretty happy with that. He passed the, ter the uh, panic check though, um, so that was nice. This combat went surprisingly well, we forgot fear unfortunately, they could have made a difference, but uh, he only killed one of mine. And I killed one of his, so one by one he's stuck though on discipline um, six, I guess. Lost one by one, and I, yeah, should have been. So he stuck around. This combat, uh, I did three wounds. He did two to me, and I what, no, he did three to me, and I I uh, sucked some blood and recovered um, one wound. So that was pretty dicey, actually. Uh, yeah. So this is what it looks like going into his turn. So uh, we're pretty, pretty much up in it. Uh, the skeletons moved up onto the objective here, so next turn they will grab it. Uh, so that's nice. He opted to charge both the chariot and the judicators into my ghouls, and they made it, like so. And the thunder herd charged my spectral hunters, wanting to make sure they are gone. And he moved up to chef my skeletons and my knights with the harpies. Uh, he wanted to chef with these guys, but they failed the march test, so um, they stuck around there. And he moved back a little bit with the temple militia and up to the hill with the hydra. Uh, magic, he cast the curse of the phantom queen on my knights. He got unit in divergence on the judicators. Not that he needed it, as we'll see. Um, that's just the better picture of <laughs> what happened. we just saw, whatever. Um, in combat, I killed the altar. I should say, in the, his magic phase here, uh, in this turn, he immediately after finishing it, he realized... Uh, I, I mentioned that I was afraid that he would cast uh, Perception of Strength on the altar. That would give him Strength 5, because he has uh, Blades of Dorag on the... On the def guys defending it, uh, but we realized he should have caused the glory of gold on them instead. Uh, that would have uh, really messed my mark luck up, but he didn't. Um, so that was good, I guess. Um, so thanks to that, I managed to kill it, and I recovered yet another wound on him. And in this combat, he wiped all but. Five of my ghouls, yeah. Seven did get the strike back, and I killed a mighty three in return. He failed all um, Aegis saves, so he didn't really need that unit in Divergence. Uh, in my turn, I had considered casting an Ancestral Aid on them. Uh, I'm glad that I didn't, it wouldn't have made a difference. And he ran into the zombies, so not ideal. Although, pretty good though that he, this guy missed both units, so he's out on his own here now. Uh, these guys finish off the Spectre Hunters. And this is what it looks like at the end of the turn. Um, I decided to charge the Varkulak into the Hyra, as we can see here. You can see back here. I thought about charging this guy, but he needed a 12. It would have been nice if he got it, but um, didn't take the, take the risk, obviously. Um, and yeah, I charged the Shaft units with the Knights and the. Uh, skeletons here as well, as we'll see. Yeah, here they moved in. Um, remaining moves, I uh, don't have a picture of that, but the Shrieking Horror moved over here to scream at the Prince on the chariot, and I moved up some Shaft to the um, Thunder Packs, as well as something to put in between the Eudicators and the Knights if he kills me in this turn. When he kills me in this turn, but um, um, that was a tricky situation because he can reform freely, so uh, difficult to really do anything about. And this guy, he moved over to the flank of the uh, temple militia. Although I d we did 
put another base in his place so that we didn't accidentally knock him, out, knock him over. So in the next pictures you'll see a see, see, uh, movement train instead of there. I caused a rise on the Varkulak, bring him back to full, full health. And I caused Whispers of the Whale, that's the name of the spell, on the Prince, um, lowering his discipline to 8. And I rolled 1 one to wound with Scream. <laughs> this is his 5 up ADS, nothing succeeded, and the Prince is gone. Boom. Gone. Um, <laughs> then we jump, jump a few steps, he killed my zombies in combat, and overran into the Tricking Horror, taking revenge. Wanting to take revenge for the... Red Prince. In this combat I did uh, 3 damage to him, he used his breath weapon on all his attacks and did nothing to me. Or maybe he did one wound but I sucked his butt and recovered that. And that sounds about right. Kill the Chef and reform uh, because uh, if, like, let's see here, he overran into this guy to get the Shrieking Horror. I did not see that coming, I thought he would turn around kill the, the skeletons to get the objective, or turn the other way to get my knights. Um, but seeing as I did, had, did that, I chose to just reform with knights, otherwise I would overran to just get away from him. But um, now I could face the thunder herd instead. Like so. Uh, yeah, here we can see... Um, yeah, the skeletons overran. They killed the uh, harpies and overran to here. So that's why they are up ahead of it. Uh, still out of arc from the temple missions though, which is nice. Um, so his turn, he charges the bats, the thunder herd. These guys fail their march test, so they can't do anything really useful, so they just move up and somewhere over here to just shoot a bit of my knights. Uh, he moves the Gorgon from over the other side of the hill to here to shaft my skeletons. Really good of him, <laughs> I guess. It's not much I, I couldn't have done much, much about it, but um, that uh, could have made a difference. Didn't as it turned out, but see that. Um, and he cast some spells as well, we can see here, he got Glory of Gold off on this unit and cast uh, Alchemical Fire on the Markluck, thinking that I would kill the Hydra and then turn around and charge into this these guys. And then um, that would not be good for the Markluck, so uh, maybe I wouldn't, wouldn't do that even. Shrieking um, Horror is killed and he moved up here, uh, closing in on the hill. Yes, he turned around. That's it. Uh, in the combat, I did two more wounds to the Hydra. Uh, we thought I'd killed him, him, but then we checked and he had six health points. So he was fine, and he did nothing back. Ten attacks, nothing on the Varkulak. Um, so that's neat. And that's the end of the turn. Uh, he killed the bats over, over here, of course, with the Thunder Pack. And I, in my turn, I decided to <coughs> charge these guys with just the vampire, charge them out of the unit, because I wanted the knights to move up to the objective instead. And he decided to flee, and uh, that was fine with me. Uh, we ended up, yeah, we, I charged the skeletons into the Gorgon, and this guy into the rear of the unit. Um, Probably a bad, bad idea in hindsight, but um, I wanted to see what you could do. Uh, pretty much. A cool picture of that, the cover picture as well. And another picture. Uh, here we can see the knights moved up to the objective, their butt just touch, touch, yes, touching it, or touching the center. Uh, and I raised some zombies for future chef purposes. <clears throat> finally killed the Hydra. Finally, um, I guess I was pretty lucky in this comeback, not not dying. Um, and he really didn't do well with his fortitude saves, not a single six, uh, which would have recovered double health points and uh, just one five throughout the whole combat. So really, really lousy. 
this combat though, um, the Gorgon killed a lot of skeletons. I think she has five attacks, and she killed six because she also has a stomp. So that was pretty cool. Uh, I did one wound back, and I managed to win combat by one, I think, <laughs> because I had Legion Standard and a lot of ranks and standard. And she did break on Discipline um, 8, I guess. So uh, I actually ran her down. I didn't want to, I would reform, but uh, to Discipline 4, I couldn't. <laughs> I had no choice in the matter. Uh, so there we are. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> there's something missing from this photo. So the combat with the, the temple uh, militia. Um, I had to issue a challenge. He took it with the champion. I killed it. And uh, I won combat by something. He's that fast. Uh, he rolled it. 10, fine, whatever. He reformed, rolled 10, fine, whatever. Pace me. We played most of his next turn and then we realized, oh wait, he has a temple legate as general in this unit. That's not a discipline 10, that's a discipline 9. So he fled. Because we we were well aware that he rolled a 10, we, we both laughed at it because it, oh, lay right on the edge. But uh, he did flee. And it did catch him and he died. So uh, that was very, very fortunate for me. Um, the parts that we played of his last turn what was that he turned around and uh, got uh, perception of strength on them. That could very well have killed me. So. Very, very lucky there, I, I'll say. Um, he moved Shadow Riders up here, these guys continued to advance, um, and these guys are surprisingly nimble with their... Or surprise, surprisingly, they are light troops, so they just moved around and uh, got into a good posi position. <clears throat> uh, my turn, I Put the Vorkalak up to, sh to shaft duty on the Judicators. Uh, the ghouls moving up to be the next ones and some maths in case anything goes wrong. This guy puts places himself in front of the Thunderpack. And these guys just run away, so do these guys with their objective markers. Uh, this guy has nothing to do really, I can't handle this unit unless I combo charge with everything and I'm not gonna try and make that happen. Maybe should have. Could have been interesting, but yeah. Actually, I think uh, hindsight, I think I could have managed that. I mean, I have the shaft, adva shaft advantage. So, yeah. Curious. Uh, I raised some more zombies in the back of these guys. I should have kept the other zombie unit here to box them in completely because they are light troops, so they can just get away from this. But if I had kept the other zombie unit here, then I don't think it could have. Uh, his turn. He charged the Vakulak, of course, and these guys charged the bats. And uh, he moved the Thunder Herd over here. Killed the Vakulak. I did save a shit ton of wounds, though. I think I actually got the attack, so I killed uh, like a few guys. Didn't matter, I still died, but that was nice. Um, the zombies moving up. These zombies charged the rear, uh, and this guy moved over here, and then the knights ran away, and here I made a big mistake, as we'll see. Uh, I used my breath weapon to uh, actually kill this unit, as we'll see in a minute, right there, it just gone. And in his last, in his, in my, uh, my charge, my zombies here, but they just killed me, um, and then they charged into the rear, and uh, he got Unity that emerges off of them, not that it mattered, and he killed, he killed my knights. So, yeah, that's the last picture, so... Um, I'll just go back to this picture, and we'll talk about this in a minute. Uh, so, the game ended, I still ha had me the objective with the skeletons over here, one was unclaimed, so I still won the objective. Uh, we calculated the points, and I won with about 500 points. So that's a 15-5 to me, <coughs> with the objective, which was pretty nice. Um, I completely unnecessarily lost the knights though, what I should have done is I should have just reformed them to face these guys, put the vampire back in the unit, still be able to breath these guys out, 
um, they would have been fine. Completely fine. Um, and maybe I should have tried to kill this unit instead. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, it was a really, really fun game. Um, some swinginess. <laughs> MVP is definitely the, the monster's revenant. Uh, I heard people complain about this guy, like being totally not worth it, but I mean, he killed a whole unit of Temple Gates with a, uh, a general um, temple. A whole unit of temple militia with a temple legate in them. Uh, killed that all by himself. Like, no problem at all. It's not all down to luck that I managed to break his that that was this one nine. No, no, that's that's yes, uh, that's how it uh, works out every time. So yeah, really happy with that guy. Uh, but in all seriousness, uh, I quite like list. Um, I'm not used to playing the vampire covenant like this with like aggressive combat char characters. The first time I play. Brotherhood of the Dragon, and it was fun. I like occultism, neat uh, spell lore, uh, and uh, yeah, it was fun. So uh, I'll probably try something like this again. Maybe I want to try some uh, infantry based uh, va vampires as well. I have a nice model for that, so we'll see. Uh, but yeah, uh, fun game. I hope you enjoyed it a bit as, uh, as much as I did. Um, and uh, I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you for listening. Cheers! <laughs>